Hi there, Miss Barber here. Counting and probability are involved in virtually every decision we make. For example, how many different work outfits do you have if you have four shirts and three pairs of slacks? Sometimes the role of probability is very clear, as in deciding whether to buy a lottery ticket. You might consider which is more likely, winning the lotto or getting struck by lightning. You might also decide to reschedule a picnic based on the probability of rain. In many cases, probability guides decisions on a deeper level. For example, you might choose a particular major because you believe it's highly marketable. In this study, you will learn how practical and powerful probability can be in our everyday lives. We'll begin with the lesson, The Fundamental Counting Principle. Discovery. You have an 8 a.m. course and woke up almost too late. You need to pick something appropriate to wear for class. You have a lecture wardrobe, which consists of two pairs of pants, we'll call them jeans and khakis, three t-shirts, one red, one blue, and one green, and two pairs of footwear, jogging shoes, and topsiders. Use a tree diagram to determine all possible different outfits. We begin with you, starting point, and you've got two pairs of pants from which to choose. You can either choose pants one or pants two. After you've selected your pants, you need to pick a shirt, three to choose from. You choose shirt one with your pants one, or shirt two with your pants one, or shirt three with your pants one. Or if you chose the second pair of pants, you still have to choose either shirt one or shirt two or shirt three. You're almost ready for class. After you've got pants and a shirt, you gotta put on shoes and you've got two to pick from. So pants one, shirt one, shoes one. Or you decide, nah, you wanna wear shoes two. Similarly, pants one, shirt two. You still have to pick a pair of shoes. Shoes one or shoes two. Pants one, shirt three. You still need shoes. So, shoes one, shoes two. You have to make the same choice if you chose pants two. Now look at what you have. If you picked pants one, shirt one, and then you've got two pairs of shoes to choose from, you got two outfits. Same thing if you pick pants one, shirt two, and two pairs of shoes, you've got two outfits. If you picked pants one, shirt three, and you still have two pairs of shoes from which to choose, that's another two outfits. Same thing if you started with pants two. Now look what happens. You got two outfits, two outfits, two outfits, two outfits, two outfits, two outfits for a total of 12 different outfits. This is how you use a tree diagram. The fundamental counting principle. The number of ways in which a series of successive things can occur is found by multiplying the number of ways in which each thing can occur. Let's apply this to the tree diagram we just did. You had to pick the number of pants you had. If we multiply that to the number of t-shirts you have, and then multiply that to the number of pair of shoes you've got, look what happens. You have two pairs of pants, and multiply that to three shirts, and then multiply that to two pairs of shoes, the product is 12, the same number we got when we constructed the tree diagram. Example, a competitor in a triathlon must choose from one of three swimsuits, two bicycles, and four types of running shoes. Determine the number of choices possible. We'll use the fundamental counting principle and we'll take the number of swimsuits available and multiply that to the number of bicycles available, and then multiply that to the number of types of running shoes possible. You had three swimsuits, two bicycles, 
and four types of running shoes. The product of three times two times four, 24. The competitor has 24 different get-ups from which to choose. Example, determine the number of four-letter words that are possible from the first eight letters of the alphabet if part A, no letter is repeated. Well, let's write down the first eight letters of the alphabet. That would give us A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Now we're going to use the fundamental counting principle. That means we've got four places to fill with letters and we have to determine the number of choices. For the first space, we've got all eight letters of the alphabet. Let's suppose we picked G. We can't use it again because no letter is repeated, so seven letters remained. Let's suppose we picked B for the second space. Then guess what? We have only six letters left. And let's suppose we picked D for that position. Then you've got five letters left from which to choose. And so the number possible is the product of eight times seven times six times five, which is 1,680 different choices. Same setup, four letter words, first eight letters of the alphabet, but part B is letters can be repeated. Let's go ahead and list all the letters again, from A all the way to H. And we still have four spaces to fill. For the first space, we have eight letter choices. But guess what? We can use any letter again, so for the second space, we still have eight letter choices. Likewise, for the third letter space, we have eight letters to choose from. And finally, for the last place, or the fourth letter, we still have eight letters to choose from. So the number of choices is eight to the power of four. That's eight times eight times eight times eight, or 4,096 possible different four-letter words. Part C, adjacent letters must be different. Let's write out all eight letters first. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. We're still using the fundamental counting principle. So we've got four spaces to fill and we have to pick out how many letters we have for each possible space. For the first one, we can choose any one of the eight letters. Let's suppose we picked G for the first letter. Then we cannot pick it for the second letter because adjacent letters have to be different. So we have only seven letters available. Let's pick A for that position. Then the third letter cannot be A, but it could be G again because it won't be next to the first letter. With A not available, but G OK, we still have seven letters available. Let's suppose we pick B for the third letter. Then for the fourth letter, we cannot choose B, but A is OK, so we still have seven letters available to choose from for the fourth letter. The tricky part here is to pay close attention to the word adjacent. Adjacent means next to. Letters next to each other must be different. Let's compute eight times seven times seven times seven. You could write this as eight times seven to the power of three, multiply it out, and the product is 2,744. Part D, groupings with all letters being the same that is, choices like AAAA, BBBB, CCCC, all the way to HHHH are excluded. Let's begin again by listing the first eight letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Notice, letters may be repeated. However, 
only groupings with all same letters are excluded. So if letters may be repeated, we've computed that earlier, that was 8 to the 4th. Now we have to subtract the groupings that have all same letters. There are 8 letters, and so there are 8 groupings that have exactly the same letters. Let's compute. 8 to the 4th is 4096. Let's subtract the 8, which would be the letters that have all the same ones, and so the difference would be 4,088. Example, a test has eight questions. The first five questions have four possible answer choices each. The last three questions have two answer choices each. If exactly one choice is marked for each question, determine how many different answer sheets are possible. This is a fundamental counting theorem this is a fundamental counting principle problem, so we'll begin by making eight slots that we fill that we multiply together. The first question has four possible answer choices, same for the second, third, fourth, and fifth. Now the last three questions, let's assume they're like true-false, so you got two choices each for those. Multiply them together, you'll get four to the fifth, times 2 cubed, the product is 8,192. Kind of interesting, an 8 question test that has 5 multiple choice questions and 3 true-false questions has 8,192 different possible results. Example, license plates in a particular state display 2 letters followed by 3 numbers such as AT-896 or BB-013. Both the first and the second number cannot be zero. Determine how many different license plates can be manufactured for the state. Let's observe, we're going to have five spaces to fill using the fundamental counting principle. Let's start with the first two, which are letters. We can have 26 for the first, and 26 for that second. There's no restrictions. We're going to skip the first and second numbers for right now and consider the third number. There are no restrictions on it and we've got 10 digits. So we've got 10 to choose from. Now we need to figure out the number of ways to choose the first and second numbers. Let's suppose the first number is zero. There's only one way to choose that. However, if you choose zero for the first number, then you cannot have zero for the second. So you've got nine numbers to choose from. This means you have a zero and a number that's not zero. The word and typically means multiply in a setting like this. Or the other possible choice is that we don't pick a zero for the first number, so you've got nine digits to choose from, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then for the second digit, you have all ten to choose, because you can have a zero there. So we have zero and not zero, or not zero and any number or typically means add. So 1 times 9, we get 9. For the or, we've got plus 9 times 10, that's 90, and that sum is 99. The number of ways to choose the first and second numbers is 99. Multiply 26, 26, 99, and 10, the product is 6, 169,240. So to answer the question, there are 669,240 possible different license plates for the state.